Hey everybody, it's Brian from Union Underground, and you are watching CMS TV. Right back here on Chris Aiken Presents. That, of course, was the Union Underground. Thanks to Brian Scott for checking in. And um, for you, Eric, as somebody that kind of, you know, I, I know you like that era of music, even though, even though it's it's taboo to talk about it when you're in a when you're in an '80s band. You know, I think you're supposed to hate that kind of music. <laughs> okay. But I know you were into that kind of music. I mean, for you to see it coming back the way it is does that do you like that because it it kind of reopens the that that style to to you know the newer kids that are coming up right uh no of course i i, I support it all love it all and i never think any bands should call should give it up if they're healthy enough to be out there playing and it's nostalgic it's it's scary when you when you consider that these bands are now classic rock or something it's, yeah. it's pretty bizarre to you know honestly because it doesn't even seem like that long ago that i saw soil play in texas yeah and the pantera guys were there at that show too walking around i remember um they, they were playing a bigger tour going on i'm trying to remember mm -hmm. uh exactly 2000 was... that would have been what 2001 or two in that era it yeah it so was that would have been the big tour for pantera that would have been reinventing the steel that would have been with slayer and morbid angel and uh static x right yeah i think I, this one honestly it was it was around that time but it was it, it was a different lineup it was uh the sepultura singer max it was oh, his other band so Soulfly, okay. It was Soulfly playing Soil, wow, um, and I have a couple of other bands, but it was it was pretty cool. We were playing a smaller place, and they were playing a the playing a bigger event, and we were allowed to go over to that and check it out. And it was nice. very cool. So all that stuff doesn't seem that old to me, but I guess it is getting old. Yeah, uh, well, Limp when, Biscuit, I mean, all those. Dude, when you think about it, that was twenty whatever years ago. <laughs> yeah, I had a scary thought uh now and i feel it's just funny to laugh at this because he doesn't he doesn't look nearly as old but he is older um i was thinking about obi-wan kenobi right, right? <laughs> obi-wan kenobi alec guinness is the actor's name okay and i was i was asking uh siri how old he was during the filming of star wars yeah come to find out i don't know if you know how old i know how old he is do you know i have how old no he idea is if he you still had alive guess, is he no, alive? He died in he died in two thousand. Okay. Um, what if you if you had to guess from Obi Wan Kenobi from the Star Wars movies, how old would you have guessed that he was when they? You're talking original Obi, the not... original Star Wars from nineteen seventy seven. Oh wow, I would have guessed you know, he was. Luke in his su seeks him out. Mid sixties. That's that's actually pretty close. I see. I would have thought back then he was. You know, he looked to me like a like my grandparents. He looked like he was in his seventies. <laughs> you know, back then. But it turns out when they were filming that, Alec Guinness was 62 <sighs> years old, which I feel is not that old to look that old. I feel like that's only seven years older than me. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, like oh. that was, and then I, but then I thought about Steven, 67. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, Pierce is five years older than Obi Wan Kenobi was, <laughs> was filmed. And so for anybody who's ever made a comment that he doesn't look exactly the same, I mean, geez, he looks fantastic. There's nobody who has a grandparent that 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 looks as cool as Steven yeah, at exactly. that age. Where and when you see pictures of Steven on stage, he puts the sunglasses on. That looks like the dude that you remember from 1984. Yeah. I mean, a little uh, older. Looks, I mean, he does look right. a little older, but I mean he's Certainly, still but. he's probably, and I think I've said this before on the show. He's within ten pounds of what he weighed in 1984. That's right. He's he's not. He hasn't gained 40 pounds. No fucking way. You know. He he probably still, what I mean. If I had to guess, and here here we go guessing what a guy weighs, but 
What's he probably weigh? 150 pounds, maybe. I don't know. Dude. Yeah, he can. He's he's we're he's an inch or so sh uh, shorter than me, and he's you know I I, I don't know I, to to be honest. Yeah. He he can wear like really small stuff, like a right. small. He could wear a small to medium shirt, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe a hundred forty, hundred fifty, hundred forty. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> he's a he's a small guy, and he has. He's strong. He, he's always been really strong. Yeah. He has like he has these big, big Mike Knuckle well, mitts. <laughs> you know, he's always like, been like a just a wiry man's man type of a dude. Yeah, like he'll come up to you, like I'll put you on the arm, yeah. like hey, how's it going? Hey man, come here, yeah. here. Boom! Like oh hey, whoa hey. It's it funny because hurts. you know, for all these years all these years of seeing steven i don't think in my life now you you have a different perspective on this i'm positive but for me just as a fan guy i don't think i've seen five pictures in my lifetime of him not being rock star steven piercy right and i i was absolutely like wow never seen this before he he put some pictures on his facebook um over the weekend, I guess him and um, Christy went to see the Sphere, the big Sphere thing oh, in Las yeah, Vegas, yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. and and he was in a suit, like he was in not not oh, like yeah, a, yeah. not a tie or nothing, but he had like a, you know, like a, a black t-shirt or black jeans shirt, and blazer, yeah, and, and a blazer on. I was like, yeah. I had to double take because I I don't think I can't remember a time that I didn't see Stephen Piercy in a leather vest or a a ripped right. up rat t-shirt or it's hard for guys like us to look formal too like yeah. i hate when i gotta go to something and i have nothing to wear for it i remember one time i was this <laughs> was probably a humiliating experience uh one of the top of humiliating experiences of my life uh, there was a uh, a really great kid that i taught guitar to this was a long time ago and he was having a bar mitzvah and the whole reason i got hired uh was because they wanted him to learn leonard skinner sweet home alabama to play with the wedding with with the bar mitzvah band that they were hiring they wanted him to come up on stage and be able to play and he didn't know right. anything about guitar you know so there there must have been a good like year you know we worked with just on this song you know right. together um but it came time for the for the event and i'm like oh my i remember back then i was i had way less money than i have today and i the only thing I had that with buttons on it was this uh, white shirt, which I I forgot was like a kind of a described as a waiter's shirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I had that, and like I put on like a black. I, I might have had some black dickies or you know something, and I and mm -hmm. I put this on to show up because this is a, a formal like event. I just didn't think it right, and when I mm -hmm. got there, I just looked like the help. And sure. in fact, people were coming up and asking me for a drink or asking me for stuff. <laughs> and I just felt like a freaking moron. Um, yeah. So now I'm, I try to have some cool stuff to work with. Yeah. I've, I've since, you know, I have an array of you know, leather shoes and if, if sure. some event comes up, but, but I don't know, I've never, I haven't been fit for like a suit in a long time. Mm -hmm. I still, I'm still like freaked out from the first time I was ever fitted for a suit was, which was back. I was probably like 12 years old. And there was a wedding or something I was uh, going to be involved in, and I had to get measured for a suit. And I wasn't warned that the guy was going to ask which way my dick goes. <laughs> All right. right. That right. They didn't tell me that was going to happen, and like that that very freaked me out. I was always like already on high alert for pervs or like sure you know, anything at that point. So when he was like, "So, which way do you hang?" I was like, "What? Ugh. Excuse me?" And yeah. And he's explaining it to me, and I was just horrified. You know what I right. mean? I didn't even know, understand what he was talking about, but I, I to the right. <laughs> <laughs> In your mind, you were like, I'm going to punch this motherfucker if he touches I didn't. Me. I was like, I was like, should I run away right now? Like, what's happening? <laughs> like, I didn't understand, but I guess they take that into consideration when they're like yeah. altering or they're making the the thing. So, like, um, because it what, definitely so, might so the pants don't end up baggy. They don't, so right. you don't have a big old saggy bag in front of your dick. You know, they, they uh, fucking perhaps. customize it. They customize it so that it, it leans right so that probably so that you don't have like right. a well, yeah, so that you don't have a big dick print in your fucking pants as you're walking right. around the that's you're walking around a party. Cool. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you want that. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, but, but not in a formal thing. No, no. It's a little <laughs> revealing. I know sometimes I have some pants like that. Yeah, my girl will be like 
your D looks pretty good in that, you know, whatever, you know. You're well, like, come yeah, unbox like, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of packages, here's a yeah, package. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, normally you don't want people staring at them. I mean, right. You gotta you gotta hide the anaconda. You have to be modest <laughs> with it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So whatever. Uh, that freaked me out. So I, I've never since gone back. It's like oh, another. We have to go somewhere and talk about my wiener and mm. fit it, fit my wiener. I just I just like to go and try to get something off the shelf. If I'm wearing jeans, I know what my size is. But when it comes to like stuff like that, that's gonna sit no. higher up. I gotta get a little bit bigger waist. Sometimes that's a problem. Maybe I should get fitted for pants, but I'm more likely to wear a blazer and some stage pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some, Whatever. Well, dude, dude, you know what? I, in a different, you know, obviously a different thing, but somewhat the same. The problem that I've run into at anything formal for me, and it's only in the last ten years, is the hair. I can't. Oh, right. I get the weirdest looks because, you know, most of the people that I know, you know, are my age or close to my age that that would invite me to something like a, a wedding or, you know, even recently recently i went to a funeral well you know i went to a funeral you have to dress appropriately to can't wear sweatpants and a t-shirt to a funeral well you wear you, gotta, you can't wear a death metal shirt to a no to a death yeah i can't wear dying thing. fetus to dying mom you know I, I can't do that but you know i had to wear like appropriate clothes and i put on the clothes and then i i fucking struggle with the hair because no matter what way i do the hair whether i you know Pull it into a ponytail, or here's the world's tiniest violin. Yeah, I know it's a pain. I, I know. I, I, I don't want to hear about your stupid hair. No, problems, but dude. what I'm you saying think? is, it never looks normal. As an no. older guy with long hair, yeah. it always looks. I either look like the stupid hippie that should give it up and cut his fucking hair, or the guy that thinks he's a yuppie but isn't. You have know? You, have you explored the man bun? I, I will never explore the man bun. You will not, dude. This is a true story. My friend Stephanie, who's you know one of my probably my best friend in the world, my friend Stephanie. Every time we go out anywhere, she's like fucking jealous of my hair, and she ends up putting it in like a man bun or pigtails <laughs> or whatever. She always right. gets her hands into my hair and is like pulling it into pigtails or there's there's a zillion yeah, there pictures of me looking yeah those that's cool though right that's like um the highlander or something right? yeah like putting it back it's almost like a, I'm, a, I'm a samurai maybe yeah. i've tried um, all that but i'm too fat for all that i don't look like a samurai i look like a sumo rai you know and it just <laughs> it, it doesn't work it doesn't you know i i've tried that look i've tried the chris jericho look where i pull it on the top you know pull it right. on the top and it falls kind of down I, i've tried them right all. That, yeah that's that makes sense well what, what are you doing now behind the, it's behind the it's ears just, i just have it pulled back if i take the headphones okay. off it's just kind of right. there but yeah you know it's, well it, it's well you so like the long. length you like i love that, it I, i'll never cut it, it again okay. I'll, I'll tell you that now i will never cut my hair again i have not there has not been a pair of scissors that have cut my hair since december 27th of 2012 i know the date because we were having a party here at my house and my friend john shaved my head into um um road warrior hawk style there's actually okay. pictures of me yeah. if, if people want to go to my facebook and look it up there's pictures of me with the face paint on the road warrior face paint and my head completely shaved and that was awesome. the last time any scissors cut my hair 12 years ago oh. so so you know I, I, but when i go to anything formal I can never look. I always get a bunch of weird looks because people always look at me as, like I said, the stoned out hippie that should give it up or the, um, you know, or if I, pull my hair, if I pull my hair back, I look like one of those fucking lawyers that, you know, aren't very good because they don't cut their hair to be businessy. <laughs> you know, you know, mm -hmm. those, you know, those lawyer types with the long hair and you just know they're not very good. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I can't win. There's not like a defense attorney or something. Yeah. Probably. My look has to be a hoodie or a t-shirt and sweats or shorts because the hair forces that, you know, right. I, I don't look, I never look good in anything with a collar on it. Anything. It always looks dumb. And, and God forbid, if I have to wear a tie, I look like a fucking idiot. I 
don't even know how to tie a tie. Oh, I definitely know how to tie it. I don't know. I've worn it I, for a good amount of years. I did a punk rock kind of thing where I would actually have to go have Steven tie it for me. <laughs> and then I, I would have to put it over my head and like, uh, it, but it wouldn't be fully like up to my neck. It would be kind of like uh, a punk right. rock kind of look where it's just kind of hanging. It, it was a bat tie. It had bats. And bats nice. on it. <laughs> and uh, there was, there was another one I had had something else on it. But uh, and it was kind of an okay look for a while. But as I said, like after a couple of years, I like to change, you know, look a little different mm -hmm. for photos and eras of time. Well, right now you've got, at least stage wise, you've got that fucking mean look now going. It's funny right. because I, you know, I know you and anybody that watches the show kind of knows your personality. The last thing you are is a mean guy. Yeah. But man, you get up on stage, especially when you're playing hard. You just look like, hey, don't get in my fucking way or you're going to get <laughs> murdered. You know, <laughs> that's kind of true to reality, though. I mean, people do uh, misjudge me a lot. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, and I do prefer, for the most part, to be the guy you see on the show because it's pretty right. straightforward. That's pretty much who I am. I'm just a stony, happy guy. Likes to joke around and have fun and not take anything too serious. You know what I mean? But mm. there's a part of me that's been kicked around by this life. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> if over 50 years that. Ain't gonna take your shit, pal. Right. Well, yeah. and nor should you. I mean, honestly, why? Why would you? You know, there's no, there's no reason to do that. But, well, I'll tell you what, dude. I did have one thing I wanted to bring up of actual music type stuff. Since okay. we're just bullshitting about our lives today, I do have a musical thing, and I have a reason for bringing it up. Let me bring it onto the screen here. I don't know if you saw this or not. And this is old Roger Daltrey is basically okay. saying he's done with the who like and, wow. and admittedly he's 79 years old so yeah. fair enough if fair i mean he's been doing this is what 1963 or whatever so i love the who he's amazing roger daltrey thank you sir mm -hmm. for a lifetime of music you know that you've given us man sure but uh, well, I, I feel the same way. Uh, I, I, I love them. I, we talked about this that Susan and I were going to go see the Who like about a year yeah. ago, and mm -hmm. I declined because I just didn't want to see the geriatric Who. Yeah, fake so, Who. Well, that's that's probably where he's at. He's like, well, I don't need to do this. Well, first of all, you know, Ant Whistle's gone, so Ant there's that. Whistle? Yeah, so there's that. He's not around anymore, and Roger doesn't like Pete. It's just that simple. Roger and Pete don't get along. Right. So to go out and be even in proximity of each other every day for a year, because the Who aren't the kind of band that can do three months. You know, there's so much interest in them that they've got to go to everywhere from bullshit Wisconsin to Bangladesh. You know, they have to play everywhere to do it and it's a big production and if you're doing it with somebody you don't like you wouldn't want to do that now here's oh, my Lord. question for you and and real quick before i ask you the question i too respect roger unbelievably not so much for his music i am not a big fan of the who per se i don't hate right. them mm -hmm. they're just one of those if i hear a song i generally listen to it if i hear a deep track i generally won't you know i'm, I'm one of those guys I, I like the hits i don't like much else that being said, I have the utmost respect for Roger Daltrey because of his work that he does with um, with uh, youth in um, in the cancer world. Like right. um, you know, and when my kid was going through cancer, Roger showed up when he didn't have a gig or anything. He showed up at the hospital that my kid was at, which mm -hmm. you know, just just walking around, signing autographs, taking pictures, and admittedly, the kids probably didn't know who he was, but the parents sure as fuck did. You know, can you imagine you're going through the hardest thing of your life, and sure. Roger Daltrey walks in? That, hey, just wanted to say hi. That's a nice that's, distraction. That's yeah. I mean, that's an that's an amazing thing from a guy that doesn't need to do that. So, all kinds of respect for him. But now onto my question for you, with him saying that he's stepping away. You're obviously in a band that there's been hints, hints that are out there that might be that Steven might want to wrap it up at some point. Right. So the question I have for you is, does that make you as the guy that's, you know, kind of 
presenting the music for Steven to do his thing over, does that make you want to commit even more to Steven to be even a better player than you've ever been before so that he goes out with a bang? Does oh, it, yeah. But, but does it also make you start looking at your own personal stuff and saying, well, if this ends in two years, I got to be ready to do my next band, my next project, my next thing. Right. So I got to start generating that, which might take away from going a million percent into the the Piercy thing. Where does that leave you as the musician? And I'm not saying necessarily you, but any musician that is playing with a guy that's, you know, kind of hitting the other end of the inching toward retirement. Well, it's, you know, it's kind of a bummer when I think about that, you know what I mean? Because this has taken such a long chunk of my life playing mm -hmm. in this band, you know, 23. So it's going to probably end up being like a 25 year career with him, but yeah, I'm grateful for it. I mean, it's allowed me to have so many cool adventures, you know what yeah. I mean? And make so many friends that, you know, I forget about sometimes, but obviously you know i put the pick thing up and they all come out of the woodwork you realize how many people you've known over the years and sure um that's all been great i i have um i have taken it more seriously over this last 20 something years uh i started really investing in it a couple years back where i, I was like you know what i'm, I'm gonna go and buy those kind of more rat guitars you know i was sure. playing the charvels with the whammy bars and i'll do things a little more which maybe i should have done all along but being that I was from the '90s, I was kind of a Les Paul guy, and, right? Um, and I just thought it was kind of punk rock to not do it the way they expected, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they they are a lot of the fans, especially the guitar nerd ones, do really care about that. So I have in the last couple of years stepped it up. Um, we've added a lot more of the more c complex songs, which have you know caused me to have to do my homework a little more. Sure. And then of course you have Johnny uh, Fingers Monaco over there that's you know the git graduate who right back when he was in the 80s go getting taught how to do this stuff by uh paul what's the paul guitarist paul, um, paul gilbert paul gilbert yeah. you know, i never had that you know what i mean i was just a kid who, just like most of the other ones from the 80s that mm -hmm. when i was 12 years when i was 15 excuse me in the late 80s and guitar magazine was coming out guitar for the practicing musician you just hope that there'd be one of the two songs transcribed in there and tablature would be a song you wanted to learn like uh, mm -hmm. fade to black for metallica that was the, that was probably my favorite uh, issue that ever right. came out of guitar for the practicing musician was the one that had kirk hammett and james i think on the on the cover sure and it had the fade to black tab that was like so exciting as a kid and we basically our old school asses had to sit there and figure out the tablature nowadays kids have have actual teachers on youtube that can show sure. every song ever ever written um but he he went to the school that was like very expensive to go to to, to, right. to learn and he was he knew this stuff from way back then i guess so having him a part of this now he's there to go that's not how that goes right that's not right and uh <laughs> you know so i have to shh, okay yeah 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 but right. even even the people that wrote the music get so far away from mm -hmm. what it was on record. I just saw a cool video with Tommy Shaw from Styx. Yeah, uh, okay. Tommy sent sent me a friend request. I, he's been a friend on my Facebook for, for a while, but he kind of explained that you know even with Styx playing these songs for so many years, that he was getting away on guitar mm -hmm. from the way things actually were on on the original sure. album. So he's had to go back and learn his own stuff a little closer because you just you take liberties over time and you're in the moment mm -hmm. you're having fun you start adding stuff and accentuating things and next thing you know after a decade or so that song doesn't really sound much like the original anymore. Right. Well, you know, and, and a big part, dude. I I joke about this with damn near every band that I interview. You guys are never satisfied, never, and this is across the board. This is every musician I know, right? Every one of you. You do something on on a record, and 33 seconds after you you unbox the record, you listen to it the first time, you're like, oh, I fucked up that part. Or, oh, I wish I would have put a squeal here or a sound here, an extra note here. You guys all do it, every single one of you. And that's why it changes so much. That's why that's why a Tommy Shaw, I mean, he's been playing you know, Renegade for 50 years. And I guarantee you the way he plays it, 
he has to push himself to play it the way that I know it. Right. Because he doesn't know it that way anymore. He sure. knows it 500 changes ago. Or, right. no, you know, now. And the guitar changes. solos in a lot of rock bands, you know, we do, we, you know, the, the bands that we played the shit out of their mm -hmm. records, you do start to, especially if they're a melodic player. Yeah. And you could, you know, they had like a Neil Sean or somebody like that. You're used mm -hmm. to hearing it that way. And so you, if they deviate from it, you notice right away and you're like, that's not as good as the one that we remember you know but, and they do well, kind of want to hear those a little more precise. for you for you as a player i'm guessing and tell me if i'm wrong on this that there's also a part of it that's a little bit of ease like and what i mean by that is you might change it a little bit because the way warren d martini played it just doesn't work with your hands you yeah, know possibly. definitely his, that's his happened are, and, and and i've got to imagine that that's difficult for you because you didn't write the song no, and you I, want you want to give the fans what they want pretty much there there's some things that i did take a few liberties on that i kind of like what i did a, a slightly better and i don't know if i'm gonna you know change it back to the album way mm -hmm. or what and he doesn't either you know he does a lot of his own thing sure but we he and i are definitely two different people i mean we're built differently he's he's a tall dude he's tall and skinny he's got long mm -hmm. long skinny long fingers, fingers and right i think he some of his stuff he did was more just to show that off mm -hmm. you know where he didn't have to do it that way um but but uh and a good example is on the um on the round and round solo uh just before it goes into the double lead Mm -hmm. um the last thing he goes like that one he he does it he stretches it on the same mm -hmm. string and does this but the way I, I i sling my guitar pretty low and there's a more uh chance that i'll screw that up that my fingers okay. aren't as long as his right and i gotta really reach to go go back you know on that one where if i just go up to the to the key of a uh up there and just kind of mm -hmm. do it on the higher strings i barely have to move it all I do, 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 the what's awesome mm -hmm. about the guitar is like the same notes appear like throughout it you're right not, it's not like when you're you know even on a piano they do too you know what i mean mm -hmm. but uh if you have a full scale 88 keys but on a guitar they reappear there there you can do things in a different spot and make it work and, and guitarists all the time do that they'll do something to do it a little different sometimes when um you're doing a, an acoustic version of something that always happens you can't you don't have enough frets to do the lead yeah. over there so you kind of play a lower register of it um how i kind of got a little lost there no, that's okay because you took me to an interesting place and there's a story. I'll put the story up on the, on the screen as well here. Um, the other thing that that brings to me is how important is the guitar itself? I know the fingers are different, but to capture the sound and, and this is the example, Satriani is literally building a replica of Eddie Van Halen's classic guitar just so that he can play in this tour that he's doing and sound as close to eddie van halen as he can now this is steve satriani right this is top okay. what three ever I, I saw this today and i have yeah. to weigh in on it a yeah please bit. do please you know do. and for one let me let me preface this by saying that joe satriani is an amazing guitar player and he was definitely one of my influences i wouldn't say it's a sure. top one or anything but when his surfing with the alien thing came on i forgot what year that was but i was yeah. pretty young i was 80s. probably it was the late 80s or something i was probably only like 14 or 15 when that came out and it was i love how melodic he is mm -hmm. his tones he get he is uh he, he loves to uh you know he's a j boogie boogie kind of player sure Satch 87 boogie, right? by the way 87 is when that came out I, oh, that was such a great year for me as a young kid learning guitar and just how sure. magical everything seemed at that time so he will he can't really do any wrong with me and i would never write him off over this fucking van halen fiasco um but right. this doesn't even make sense like having to build an amp to replicate with the technology we have today we've discussed this uh they have tone x and these things where he could literally go over to wolfie's house and go put he could scan whatever amp ed has there just put it into this box 
And Mm -hmm. then, because Ed, for one, has used probably 30 different amps over the albums. I don't know how many albums Van Halen did. uh, 10 or something. At least. 10, 11, yeah. At least 10. He probably used a different amp on every one of those. So mm-hmm. you almost, if you were really going to try to go true to form, you'd have to utilize today's technology to have a pedal board for each album that song came out of to like have it all for you there. Well, here, correct. Answer this question for me. And this is coming as a true guitar, stupid person. I'm looking at this picture right here, right? There's an Eddie Van Halen amp, right? It, right. Shouldn't that TV. sound like Eddie Van Halen? Yeah. But you had a good point you were driving at. I know what you were driving at. You're like, is yeah. the tone in your hands or is it in the amp? Yeah. And it's in it is in your hands. Okay. Um if you if you pick up Eddie Van Halen's guitar, or go to play it, you're not gonna sound like Eddie Van Halen. Right. You know, you could play through his amp. It is in it is in the hands. And I've I've had other people mention this too. And the same with the rat stuff. I mean, people try to play the rat music, and they, they usually you'll see them on a video playing along with it. Mm-hmm. Which is not the same as playing as you're no. the main thing they're hearing. Okay, those are two totally different sure. things. You can mimic to a point. Right. Like you can use the same guitar and you can use the exact same tunings and, and all the same gear, but it still is gonna come down to your hands just don't move. Even if it's a you know a hundredth of a centimeter movement, your hands are never gonna move exactly the same way as Warren D. Martinis. No, Joe Satriani's hands are never going to move exactly the same way as Eddie Van Halen's. It's just unless not you wanted possible. to devote your life, if you want to devote your life to to playing exactly like that guy, to where you're just a you're that guy, you're that guy's mm-hmm. stunt double. You know what I mean? But that's not me. I mean, I create so much different kinds of music and stuff. It would probably blow people's minds, you know, the yeah. styles and and things out there. But there's expectations of we we've discussed before like you know i've realized now working with steven they kind of expect a certain sound mm-hmm. uh f- from it and so the next so the next thing we do solo album wise will be probably more directed towards an early rat sound or something okay. like that um instead of trying to be experimental doing you know the led zeppelin sound <laughs> right yeah. uh different goofy things we've we've tried um but uh yeah with the with the future you know winding down right now i definitely want to go out with the bang you know when we did the the for the whiskey show it was so important to me to sound to sound good that i like bought a whole new spawn amp for that sure right uh, which which when i was in walmart another thing i did was get a a, a cool little frame for this poster nice was, look at um, that this this was uh jim Koch, one of the guy who did the i was talking about the picks yeah um he had these at the whiskey um the, the sold cool, out man. Right, that's cool, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I found, but it was an awkward kind of shape, whatever the inches right. were on this. So I had to like, I did find a frame for it. That's cool. Um, but for that gig, you know, I, it was important to me because I remember a year ago we played. I, I remember Brent Woods coming up, was like I couldn't hear you, and then my <laughs> amp took a shit, like at some right. point in the, in the thing, and I had to plug into whatever the house gear was. Right. I was like, f that man. I threw down a lot of money to get this head and show up and. That was a good move. I'm glad I did that with, uh, you know, this is with sincerity in my heart. Sure. Uh, because you know Scott Splaw was totally stoked on that. I mean, the show's kind of a um, became a kind of big thing. I, this one dude on YouTube, Vic something, has like a pretty yeah. good uh, viewing of it. That's where he was standing on top of the balcony. He's kind of yeah. I, I watched that guy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and he had filmed like all the bands that played the whiskey that weekend. He has a, a faster pussycat one. He has an L.A. Guns one, and he has the the Piercy one. I mean, the L.A. Guns one had about three thousand views. Right. The Stephen Piercy one had like fifty three thousand views. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there there's an interest in this. People, it has. You know, kudos to Jason for for recommending that we do this, uh, Jason. Sure. Green on that, uh, but it it has really sparked some excitement over this out of the cellar thing. Yeah. And, well, I um, told you last week, you better fucking bring it to Cleveland because I want to see it. I, Not yeah, even because I, I want to see you as much as I want to see that show. I want to. I yeah. actually want to see it. We'll be, we'll be doing it all year. I mean, it's it's turned into that to where. We've gone from whatever that this was. <laughs> this shirt was a uh, uh, shirt that Stephen had, had given me that says uh, Stephen Piercy Sunset Strip Experience Nice Tour 2023 20, 2024. Cool little work shirt. 
Um, and he was really pushing for that. He really wanted to to recreate the Sunset Strip. And I, I, you know, it was a cool idea. I thought people would like that. And he was even talking about going as far as to bring some stuff to make it look like the the, the whiskey right. everywhere we went. You know, but it just wasn't catching on. You know what right. I mean? But so mm-hmm. now I think they're kind of like going with uh, back in the cellar. Steve yeah. Bruce, he's he's going back in the cellar, folks. He's winding down his career, whatever. Mm-hmm. We're we're not going to wind it down you know next week you know what i mean i i know the guy's gonna play for a couple more years but he's in that that final mm. lap of most of these places we're going he might not be back there yeah well so okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll say okay to that he's one of those guys if he don't play for six months you're gonna get a phone call <laughs> hey man what do you think about you know what do you think about getting it back together and just playing one or two shows? Next thing you know, you're back sure. on tour again. You know, which well, fine. I'm sure you don't care. I I would I would always be open to that. I mean, if if things changed into my life, if there was actually a point where I was so successful that I had to go, ah, I'd love to, Steve. I just can't do it right now. I mean, that would right. be amazing, actually, if things got sure. Started. But he is he is very generous to me. So, mm-hmm. you know, I I always give give him precedence and i've always like never really got involved in any other band and as you know from my stories on the show it's it's all a scam anyway you know what i mean all the young guitar Mm -hmm. players out there you'll get a chance to play for a known band um but you're gonna get paid in compliments and you know (laughs) deli trays and baby here's your 30 dollars and a and a styrofoam um sandwich (laughs) <laughs> right yeah you you have to really like put in your time and, and be an asset to the band and make yourself mm-hmm. like irreplaceable and and somebody who contributes things you know what i mean right. so, i mean you got your top players out there and o- over the years i've it, it, i've realized there's not that many of them you know what i mm-hmm. mean the top hired guns sure the pool is not that huge and as some of these guys age out they'd prefer to look for a younger person that can do that uh yeah there's a couple of like uh, there's definitely younger kids out there that have a great sound that are going to go on to do some great things but Mm -hmm. kids ears and tastes have changed over the years where the vintage sounds that we're used to aren't necessarily what they think sounds good Mm -hmm. yeah well and and it is and you're right about that pool too dude because i know we were talking about on the cms the other night um this is the weirdest thing. I, I don't care what anybody says. This is just a weird combo. And I know the guy is super fucking talented. So I'm not right. trying to say that it's weird because he can't play the parts, but seeing Joel Holkstra right. join, um, uh, except mm-hmm. that just seems weird. Holkstra doesn't, when I see that guy, I think white snake, or I think, sure, you know, that type of stuff. I don't see him in except right but again because the the pool is small of great guys that have a good look have a great talent and can play universally anything he's one right. of the few you know that he's going to show up and throw down and he's yeah. a professional in in every sense of the word mm-hmm. so and they're and they're going to pay for that yeah of course they're yeah I'm, I'm not thinking he's playing for 50 dollars in a deli tray I'm no definitely not absolutely thinking that. not he's they're they're probably <laughs> paying a, a big amount to make sure mm-hmm. that they uh sound good and to have him out there and i you know sure. i have a couple friends of mine that you know do that uh you know robbie cranes you know very successful you know from playing for mm-hmm. warrant you know and robbie's another one of those amazing guys who could play anything man yeah anything on the yeah, base i mean he's in it. what now black star riders and right and every other band known to man it seems like every time i turn around here's another band and there's robbie crane on stage so this is his life it always has yeah. been he's he's he loves it and mm-hmm. um and sarzo's guys, another guy right rudy sarzo another guy that you know anybody needs a bass player there he is but even rudy i mean i i, I haven't followed him the, all along but has he kind of dipped out for a while didn't he, he wasn't doing too much there he's uh, always been in something ago. as long as i can remember whether it was right you know even in like the 2000s when you know when a lot of those guys weren't in their big their bigger bands anymore sarza was still in like blue oyster cult and stuff you know he was still out there he did like 10 years with blue oyster cult you know so he was always sort of out there you know just maybe not the bands that we pay attention to but he was still always Mm -hmm. you know bruce kulik another guy you know, after Kiss, a lot of people think he went away. Well, he didn't. He had Union, then he was in Grand Funk, and 
you know i mean he's it's, busy too. it's scary for a lot of these guys that have, have, have done this contributed their whole lives to it and then if, if something finally comes to an end you do have to consider what you're going to do yeah for uh for a living out of that you kind of asked me a little bit about that and i'm i'm excited for the future no matter what happens right you know what i mean and i love you i love that you gave me this opportunity to have oh, shit, a you've taken it over it's damn near eric farantino's presents at this no point. you know <laughs> you, still, <laughs> you were saying some things last night i was like was he getting mad at me or no um, like what what did i say last night oh you said it was something um oh, oh he he doesn't do any movies or interviews anymore though no. he doesn't want to be a broadcaster what no you- that's not what i said what i said <laughs> was that what i said was the honest to god truth and and i'll say it again here and you can tell me if i'm wrong but i said that you don't have time to yeah. learn all of the bands it, you know you were totally true and actually i thank you for that and, and believe me dude if i had an issue you know me i'd fucking say ah! hey i know <laughs> I'm, I'm very straightforward i mean my friends sure kinda don't always like that about me you know what i mean mm-hmm. but i'll tell them if there's an issue i'll try to be respectful word at nice at first or whatever um but my my issues are few and far between when i work with other people like you that are really motivated and stuff like there aren't really any issues you know what i mean no. we just want what's best and we just yeah. want to put in kind of equal work on it yeah and hope it becomes something great i mean the broadcasting thing like what is what does that mean is that like fishing like like casting for broads <laughs> hey <Right. laughs> ow got one <laughs> no um <laughs> i i i i like to what we're doing whatever this is if broadcasting means you have to interview people no that's not like it i don't really yeah. care you know what i mean i just like us doing comedy talking shit just opening yeah. up our lives to everybody Mm -hmm. i mean the interviewing thing is separate (laughs) it's okay to be separate on that because and 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 you've told me this off 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 show and i'll bring it to the show i don't don't care we'll pull the curtain back it's difficult when i know all of everything about the band and you're just sitting there looking at the camera it is difficult and i felt so like what do i do back here and and here, then I'll, I'll just the sit other- here and I'll sit here and stare at the camera for thirty minutes while you talk. You know that sucks. Look <laughs> at <laughs> Or I'll sit there and start. To, whatever I do, it's either it's either distracting or uncomfortable. <laughs> and and then Chris would be like, "Go your question." Like he he was trying to train me to do this question thing, and it's it's I'm not very good at it. And my que- and when I don't know anything about them, and my questions, if I'm trying to formulate something, I was hoping they, the, the the guest would say something that would spark a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you you had covered a lot of it, and it, it became awkward. I, I like what we're doing here. We're yeah, we're we're gonna kind of have an interview, and it'll probably allow us to interview more people because you'll be available whenever they are mm-hmm. to do it. They don't yeah, have to do exactly. it live. Mm-hmm. And you continue to do this, and the show kind of goes into this interview for a minute. You know, yeah. thirty minutes, fifteen minutes, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, if it's somebody like not. I don't mean to sound like that, but I mean like we probably shouldn't, you know, put them out there for longer than fifteen minutes or something yeah. like that if they're not that known. You know what I mean? Or they don't have the pizzazz to keep people. You know, well, that's it. In. If they're if they're if they're a snore, I try to get out. That is that is very true. If they're right, if they're a snore, and that's even me just one on one. If they're if they're boring okay thanks a lot <laughs> now if we if we get like a ricky from headbangers ball yeah we'll talk uh, for a while but you know uh he's he's amazing or you get ron keel you know what i mean mm-hmm. you know these people you know you're getting you're just going to be yeah. sucked into their whatever they're talking about mm-hmm. so that's a different story that's like a special episode when we get some of these guys that are sure. just you know really know how to do an interview and and have mm-hmm. a lot of energy and are excited to be there and stuff those those people you definitely want to give them all, even a whole hour maybe you know yeah, what i mean sure exactly well speaking of giving people a whole hour we've given them more than that at this point so okay. let's wrap it up because um with the union thing we're we're right at about time anyway so let's do let me put the graphic on the screen that i have neglected for the entire show there we go jesus how did i not have that up and eric tell us where you're gonna be because i understand you're out and about this week i'm prepared now to tell you guys where we go i actually realized i'm flying wednesday okay um and i will be thursday we're gonna be in baltimore at ram's head 
Okay. Okay. Uh, then we're heading over to PA. We're going, we're going to be in Glenside, PA at the Keswick Theater on Friday the 19th. Then we head over to Uncaseville, Connecticut for the Mohegan Sun, okay. uh, where we're going to headline the 80s rock invasion. Okay. Uh, that's going to have uh, other bands. Vixen's going to be out there with us. And I think uh, Quiet Riot. And okay. oh, you know who's going to be is um, the other LA Guns. Oh, the Riley's LA Guns? The <laughs> Riley's LA Guns without Riley. Without which Riley, be yeah. Interesting. Uh, so I guess they're opening the show or something like okay. that. Uh, so that should be good. But that's a full blown arena. That nice. That, so that should be exciting. And that's on the third day, which is always good because it sucks to kind of fly out and go play an arena. Like you want a couple warm up shows to be like right. yeah, full autopilot. Let's sure. do this. Um, and then on Sunday we're going to be in Pachogue, New York, at the uh, Pachogue Theater. Nice. And that's uh, Sunday, January 21st. Now, you and I, after the show, are going to have to uh, figure out what we're doing for m for next Monday. We, we might have to do something a little in advance because okay. I'm going to at the fly day for me. So after the show, you and I will talk. That's fine. <clears throat> and that's what we got, folks. And uh, that's that'll that's for the rest of this month. And then Chris Aiken presents back as usual for the next few weeks. And then uh, yep. middle of uh february we're gonna do the two nights with night ranger at the strat right. in nevada that'll so, be good yeah. well very good so here's the real question that everybody wants to know as you do these east coast shows how many picks will be available <laughs> on those four days so that people need to make sure that they buy them man there i you know as i said this initial little test run i did yeah. i'll be honest i only only made like a hundred of these because i was just like well what if i'm stuck with a bunch of these or nobody really cares about it and i go oh shit did i miss you know what i mean so i mm -hmm. think even today after i wrap up the show i'm gonna have to uh hit up uh, the pick guy sure and get another will order you, going will you have five available for each show yeah i i mean definitely for these four shows jason had told me it's good to give them about 10 per show okay uh on average as far as expectations for for merch sales in general i mean he didn't really take into account out what a hot item these are <laughs> that's right <laughs> but uh but anyways yeah i'm gonna i did i am gonna take at least like 50 of these out there okay. for the four shows and um probably not going to be taking the orders you know till tomorrow i'm not going to be able to ship them till sure. the following uh tuesday anyway uh but again we are going to be able to get a link do or die by tomorrow the link will be official where you can get these and as i said everyone who uh goes ahead and pays the 25 i'm going to sign them okay send it out to you Nice. And who knows, maybe even give you a mention on the Chris Aiken show since it's not going to be that many of you because it's limited That's edition. That's right. Well, very good, man. So the bottom line is make sure you have an extra 25 bucks or 20 bucks in your pocket if you're going 20 to 20 bucks shows. at the show because I don't have to ship it or anything yeah. and pay taxes on it. So that's yeah. the cheapest place is to go, go to the concert, buy a ticket to the That's Stephen right. Piercy show. Go get a meet and greet to meet Piercy. Get your picture with him. He'll sign anything you got if you get if you buy one of his meet and greets. I'll be in the general vicinity there. So if you right. if you buy this at the merch booth, at some point, as soon as I pack my guitar up, I'm going to run out there and um, kind of catch the people leaving the Piercy meet and greet. Right. And I'll be I'll, I'll be in that general area to, to meet you guys. Very good. Well, and as for me, I'll be where I always am here. Um, <laughs> uh, Wednesday, Seth Williams show, CMS on Saturday, and there'll be some form of Chris Aiken Presents on Monday, I'm sure. So um, next week's uh, guest is a, is a new band that Eric would like to see 15 minutes of uh, called uh, Paralandra. Um, it's, it's like Hailstorm-ish type of a band. Okay. People are learning about that so we will introduce them and um me and you'll figure out some time to record and get that probably tomorrow i'd imagine so right. we'll get it, that's, we'll what get it. that's what i'm thinking we'll get it done and uh, but that's gonna do it because we are gonna be right up against the the time that i have to broadcast this right. shit so to for broadcast chris, <laughs> that's right <laughs> so for chris aiken presents i am chris aiken i'm eric ferentinos and we are gone see you folks
Do you want to watch the classic metal show all day long? Do you have a Roku? If your answers are yes and yes, then you need to get Wowza TV on your Roku. It's free to install and brings you the classic metal show on your TV 24-7. Just look up and install Wowza TV in the Roku streaming store and you can enjoy the CMS all day and night right on your TV. Yes, folks, this includes the live editions of the CMS as well. Install Wowza TV now on your Roku and never be without the classic metal show again. Hail and kill.